And Parker. Parker, the center fielder, was reached base in five, nine consecutive games. Average up to 358 with nine home runs this year. Takes a strike over the outside corner. William and Mary, we mentioned the 22 and 10 record, but they've put together some really impressive offensive numbers. William and Mary fourth nationally in walks as that ball fouled back. The tribe has been issued 213 free passes this year. They're 18th nationally, having been hit by 65 pitches. 24th nationally with a team on base percentage this season of 424. 0-2 pitch from noon is a little bit too tall. Not a bad waste pitch there on 0-2. The Blue Devils fan out defensively with Johnson in left, Obi in center, and Gracia in right. Miller and Clark, the left side of the infield. Morris and Bravo, the right side, with Stone behind the plate as that one is at the knees, but a little bit low, two and two. Parker, as we mentioned, have reached, has reached base in nine consecutive games for William and Mary. Average up to 358 for the center fielder who pops that one down the right field line. Bravo into the bullpen to give it a look. But he's out of room. The count rides at two and two on Ben Parker, the graduate student from Los Altos, California. Played four years at Whitman College where he earned a degree in economics. Entered the season with a career average of 376, 475 career on base average. Waves at a breaking ball and misses. And he's down on strikes, one down. Good. Pitch there by Noon. It went back to the off speed after going to the fastballs for much of the at bat there. Now it's Joe De Los Santos who is putting together a phenomenal season here for William and Mary. De Los Santos, the fifth year from just up the road in Creedmoor, has reached in all 31 games this year for William and Mary as the breaking ball is at the knees for a strike 0 and 1. De Los Santos has hit safely in eight consecutive ball games for the Tribe. Rolls one toward third, playing the big hop as Miller looks the runner back to second and throws across the diamond in time for the second out. Nice play there by the Duke third baseman to retire the William and Mary left fielder, and it's up to the left-handed hitting Anthony Greco if the Tribe will scratch in the game's opening frame. Leadoff man got to second on a double, but that's been it so far for William and Mary as Greco comes to the plate, hitting 287, three home runs as he takes a strike over the outside corner. Greco, the true freshman out of Buffalo, New York, 22 RBI and a 389 on base average as Noon delivers a fastball outside. Noon through here on Sunday in the 11 inning win over Miami. One inning, four hits, couple of runs allowed. Get through 19 pitches as that one fouled back and it's one and two. Noon, one of 12 different, pardon me. Yeah, 12 different pitchers that threw in the game on Sunday for the Blue Devils in that 11 inning win. A ball and two strikes. Noon ready to go, left on left matchup. Here's the pitch. And buries one downstairs, ball two. And that's on the outside corner, strike three. Noon with a pair of punch outs in the first, and the leadoff double does no harm for William. Oh, with a 1.6 earned run average, it's the sixth best ERA nationally as Morris first pitch swinging, grounds one toward short, backhanded by Francella, and throws late to first. So Morris legs it out, we'll wait and see how that is scored, most likely an infield hit. And it will be. So the leadoff man aboard for each club in the first inning. And now a chance for the Blue Devils to take an early lead. Knowles, 4-0, a 1.60 ERA. We mentioned six nationally in ERA. He's given up just seven earned runs in 39 innings. 24 hits, only 16 walks against 58 strikeouts. And a microscopic 1.74 average against for the William & Mary right-hander who delivers on Ben Miller who takes low ball one. Miller's, we mentioned, a 13-game hitting streak. He's reached base safely in 15 consecutive ball games. Named to the Golden Spikes midseason watch list last week. Had the game-winning hit for the Blue Devils here in the walk-off victory over Miami on Friday. 
as he takes the bottom of his own strike to even the count. Knowles, by the way, named a midseason perfect game All-America and the number 48 starting pitcher nationally, according to D1Baseball.com. And it gets better as Miller swings over the top of a curveball that just had the bottom fall out, one and two. Knowles has started all three combined shutouts this year, as well as a combined two-hitter for the try. One man on, nobody out. Last of the first inning at Jack Coombs Field in Durham. It's a one-two pitch on Miller, and that's low. Fastball at 93, but a good block by Gornison, the catcher. He's in harness tonight for Wave and Mary. Crispin at third. Francella is at short. Trajani at second. Greco holding the runner at first with an outfielder of Del Santos, Parker, and Jackson left to right. Two and two the count. Right-hander against right-hander, and that's low. Another fastball missed, and the count full on Miller. Miller on Sunday, a four-hit game, including a big triple. It kind of got things going for the Blue Devils. The 3-2 runner goes, and Miller serves one foul down the right field line. Another 3-2 pitch on Miller. Instead to first, and Morris diving back safely. Caleb Stone umpires over at first tonight. Thomas Newsom makes the calls at second. Trevor Henson is the third base umpire. And Lindy Hall behind the plate. He's got the balls and strikes on this Tuesday evening. Three and two. Knowles delivers. And Miller fouls that one back. Good at bat here by Miller. Eighth pitch of the at-bat forthcoming for the Duke third baseman. Morris, an infield hit to start the game. William and Mary had a leadoff double in the first, but couldn't get anything around against Tim Noon, the Duke starter, if you're just tuning in. 3-2, runner goes again, pitches grounded up the middle, and eats up the second baseman, rolls into shallow center field, and the Blue Devils have runners at the corners to open up the ball game. Well, the defense played perfectly there for William and Mary with Trajani, the second baseman, covering the bag. But a hot shot off the bat of Ben Miller. And it kind of took a tough hop there on Trajani. Kicked into center field. It'll be a base hit. And the Blue Devils with something brewing here in the first inning. Runners at first and third. And nobody out in the big hitters coming up. Terrific at bat. Terrific piece of hitting there by Miller. And now Grassi of the Duke right fielder coming up. Grassi at 338 for the season. He's homered eight times and knocked in 38. Overshift on against him with the second baseman Trajani playing out in shallow right field. First pitch in the turf. Good block by Gornison. Ball one. Grassi off to a great rookie campaign. Takes just outside here, a fastball missed. A couple borderline pitches not going the way of Knowles in the first. Knowles has been just terrific for William and Mary this year. Check swing on a pitch that was called a ball. Not quite sure where that missed. 3-0 and on the Duke right fielder. So a hitter's count here. We'll see if Gracia has the green light. 3-0 with two on, nobody out. He is taking and takes low. That's ball four, yeah. Well, a little perplexed there. I think Gracia thought the last pitch was a strike two. So the base is loaded for the Blue Devils. Nobody out, and it's Logan Bravo coming up. First walk issued by Knowles. And a little bit of bad luck here for Oles, too, on that ball that was hit really right at the second baseman. Just kind of ate him up a little bit. Oles. 
Bases loaded, nobody out. Here's Bravo, who swings and drives one. Out toward left field, hit deep. This is De Los Santos at the wall with plenty of real estate behind him to make the catch, but a run is in. Bravo hit it out near the wall, but De Los Santos had some room shy of the fence to haul it in. And the Blue Devils lead 1-0 on Bravo's 31st RBI of the year. So two on, one out, and Chase Cruson, the Duke DH, coming up. Cruson had five hits in the series against Miami over the weekend, including a couple of big RBI hits for Duke on Sunday, and that wild come from behind, behind win as the left-hander receives a strike 0-1. See the numbers on the year for Cruson. The Blue Devil rookie with those three home runs. The one strike pitch. Nothing in two on a challenge fastball. We mentioned Knowles, who was a Colonial Athletic Asso uh, Coastal Athletic Association honorable mention pick last year. Had a career long five outings three different times this year. The 0 2 out toward center field, racing in Parker, still coming, makes the catch, and now the Blue Devils are gonna be doubled off of second base. Not quite sure what Miller was doing there. Wonder if he forgot how many. And Tim Noon back to work and misses low, ball one. Whistled foul off to the right by Henry Jackson, the right fielder. And the count now, one ball, one strike. Popped up, back of first into foul ground. Bravo going out, still going, a feet first slide and can get it. Good effort there by Bravo, the Duke first baseman, it's one and two. Again fouled off to the right and out of play. And that's outside, two and two. And Noon misses again. Three balls in two strikes. First three ball count for the Duke left-hander tonight. And that's inside ball four. Lead off man on for the second straight inning. Just the fourth walk of the year surrendered by Noon. And it's Nate Gornison, the catcher, coming up now for William and Mary. Gornison at 274 for the campaign. Four home runs this year. He's knocked in 18 and takes a first pitch strike, 0 1. Noon permitted the leadoff double to Barnes in the first, then went strikeout, ground out, strikeout to get off the field in the first. The leadoff walk here in the second. And now the left hander goes back to work and misses outside. One ball and one strike. Noon has been really reliable for Duke in the midweek. Started, or did not start, but pitched that game against Liberty last week. One inning, two hits, one run, a walk, a couple of strikeouts, checking throw on the runner at first. Through an inning here against Campbell a couple of weeks ago, one inning, one hit, one strikeout. Two scoreless innings against Towson, three innings against Ryder, as that one fouled right at home plate, one and two. Maybe his best start of the year was back on February 27th when he threw against Davidson. Four innings, one hit, did not give up a run. Struck out five and walked two. Threw 58 pitches in that game. But his longest outing of the year came against Virginia in relief, a swing and a miss. And Gornison down on strikes, third strikeout for noon. And Trajani coming up now for 
William and Mary. Against Virginia, noon in relief, or noon in that game, I should say, four and two third innings. No hits and three strikeouts. Phenomenal outing as Johnny at the plate, the right handed hitting second baseman. He takes the first pitch low. Good block by Stone. Noon actually finished that ball game after Ryan Higgins started for the Blue Devils. Noon was the fourth pitcher used in that game. It was a game the Blue Devils were on the short end of, but Noon did a phenomenal job there. As that ball looped to left field, it'll fall in front of Johnson for a base hit. And William and Mary with two on and one man out in the second. That's a game you look back on. Duke ended up winning that, winning that series. And Noon... And those four and two-thirds scoreless innings able to preserve some arms and help the Blue Devils win on Sunday. It's all about winning. You certainly want to win every game, but Noon being able to go deep there, save some arms, help the Blue Devils get that victory on Sunday. First pitch on Christman is low. Ball one. Trey Christman, the third baseman, the eighth place hitter in the order. Foul to the netting. One and one. A homer and 10 knocked in for Trey Chrisman, the rookie who takes outside, two and one. So after working around some trouble in the first, Nunes created a little bit of trouble for himself in the second. The leadoff walk certainly does not help. As that one a little bit too tall, three and one. And a walk would load the bases and would be a very rare two walks in an inning for Noon, who would only walk three batters and all 25 and two third innings coming into action today. Is that one sprayed foul off to the right? Runner breaking for third. They throw behind him. Morris to Miller. Throw is high and not in time. So Jackson read it off the pitcher. Swipes third. And they're at the corners now with one man out. Noon who threw behind the runner. Morris got it but made a high throw to the third baseman, Miller. And Jackson who runs pretty well now six of six. In stolen bases this year is the breaking ball. Looped down the right field line and out of play. Noon looking for a ground ball here with one out. Could get him out of the inning unscathed. Blue Devils up a run the pitch. Breaking ball right side and foul up the first baseline. Three and two. To left field and hit well. Johnson on the move, still going. This ball is gone. A line drive, three run home run for Trey Christman and the Tribe with the lead in the second. Second homer of the year for the rookies, up to 13 RBI now. And William and Mary with the three to one lead. As Noon back to work, pumps in a strike on the William and Mary shortstop. And that ball to third, Miller cuts it off, fires across the diamond, and Bravo holds the bag for the second out. Two down, lineup turns over. And bullpen activity beginning now for the Blue Devils. So Francella rolls out. Jackson Emus getting up. The right-hander tossing for the Blue Devils. And now Jerry Barnes the third, who doubled down the left field line his first time up. He takes a strike over the inner third. The home run, just the second that Noon has permitted all year. The uh, one strike offering on the inside corner, but misses too far inside. One and one. Please don't look at the bullpen. Barnes, the sophomore from Virginia Beach, takes a strike. It's one and two. 
35 games played a year ago, made 21 starts, 17 hits, and 13 driven in. And that hit him on the knee, right on the top of the kneecap, and he will take first base. It's the seventh batter that Noon has hit this year. We told you in the first inning, if you were with us, William and Mary ranks 18th nationally in terms of hit by pitches. That is the 66th time this year William and Mary batter has been hit by a pitch. And for Barnes, the 13th time he's been hit this year, and that the most on the team. Brings Parker to the plate, and we'll send Alex Stone out for a visit. You wonder if this is maybe to give Emus a couple extra graduate student. Big open stance. Takes the first pitch low, ball one. Parker, we mentioned in his first at bat, the four-year player at Whitman College, where last year he was a Division III All-America second team, D3Baseball.com, fourth team All-America, first team All-Conference, All-Region selection first team. Had a phenomenal end to his year. He was an all-conference pick a couple different times, and he's ahead in the count here, two balls and no strikes. On the Whitman single-season record in slugging percentage, runs scored, RBI, home runs, and total bases. Called a strike on the pitch there, two and one. 49 runs, 55 RBI, and 15 home runs, all a season, a single-season school records. Two-time All-America pick. Just phenomenal career now wrapping up his career at William and Mary. Takes the breaking ball here, and it's two and two. Couple taps on the plate with a runner at first, two down. Right hander against right hander, the pitch. Chopped toward third, Miller plays it in foul ground. And Parker stays alive, trying to keep his on-base streak alive here tonight as well. Has reached in nine consecutive games. Three to one, you can see the score there. If you're just joining us, William and Mary, all three runs this inning on the big three-run home run by Trey Crispin, the Second home run of the year for the freshman. Two and two. Big overshift on here against Parker, the right-handed batter. Duke plays him to pull, and he gets hit on the elbow. They'll award him first base. Second consecutive hit batsman by Blue Devil Pitching. That is the 67th time this year a member of the tribe has been hit by a pitch. And now Joe De Los Santos coming up. De Los Santos, nothing for one. He grounded out to third in his opening at bat. Fifth year player, went to, or is from Creedmoor, takes a called strike here, went to Granville Central High School. Honorable mention all conference in 2022, last year. Finished second on the team in hits with 61. Second run score with 52. 44 RBI, 11 doubles and eight home runs. Takes a strike here, it's 0-2. To the Santos who has reached base in every game this year. Had kind of a crooked look there for Lindy Hall, the home plate umpire. On a borderline pitch. Emus way ahead, nothing in two. Right-hander against right-hander. Here's the pitch, and it swung on and missed to retire the side. But a good inning for William and Mary, the Tribe, striking for three runs in the frame, and they do it on two hits against Alex Stone, the Duke catcher, who takes a slurvy breaking ball down and away, 1-0. Stone has reached base in nine straight games for the Blue Devils. Average has climbed up to 279. As he swings and lifts one out towards center field, charging in Parker, the center fielder, still racing in and makes the catch and shallow center for the first out. One down, base is empty, and it brings up the switch hitting shortstop, Wallace Clark. Clark at 
258 for the year with four home runs. Clark instrumental in that Duke comeback on Sunday and the Wild went over Miami in 11 innings. It was Clark who had the game-winning hit on Sunday, that two-run single to left field that scored Bravo and Albright to win the game for Duke. He also was hit by a pitch and walked in the game on Sunday. Takes a breaking ball and it's quickly nothing and two on the Duke shortstop, hitting left-handed against the right-hander. Blue Devil certainly left a little bit of meat on the bone there in the first inning with Knowles kind of on the ropes in the first as Clark swings and misses at a good fastball, 94. On the fastball there, first strikeout for Knowles. And now two down in the Duke's second inning brings Devin Obie to the plate. But you worry a little bit with a guy who's so good, and Knowles certainly is. You have a feeling he's going to be a high draft pick in the Major League Baseball first-year player draft later this summer but Duke had the bases loaded and nobody out against Knowles in the first inning they get the sacrifice fly from Bravo that was what five six feet away from leaving the yard to left field then the double play on the base running miscue by the Blue Devils and you hope that if you're Duke doesn't come back to hurt you one and one now on Obi after the swinging strike but the concern is with the guy who is so good and has been so good Preseason all-conference, 4-0 with a 1.60 ERA. That You know what? Maybe when you have your chance, you need to, to get to them while you can because historically guys like Knowles get better as the game moves along and you don't have many opportunities to get to that starting pitcher as Obi receives a slider and the count 2-2. Two and two. Bases empty, two men down, and a 3-1 William & Mary lead in the second. The right-hander Knowles has the sign, lifts the leg, and the pitch is inside. Went to the fastball and missed there at 92. Knowles has been 92 to 94 consistently with the fastball tonight. Featured that good slider, then that wipeout breaking ball. Obi rolls over the slider here up the third base line. It's still three and two. Kyle Johnson would hit next, but there are two men out in the inning. Obi takes ball four. It's a rare walk issued by Knowles, more rare. He's walked now two in the game. Knowles has only walked two or more people four times this year. And this is the first time that he has issued multiple walks in an outing since he issued two against Quinnipiac back on March the 17th. So almost a full month of starts without allowing more than one walk. Kyle Johnson digging in now. You see the numbers on Johnson, who missed some time with a lower body injury. Obi goes, and Johnson fouls the first pitch away for strike one. So Johnson, who has been a two-way guy for the Blue Devils, started the ball game for Duke on Saturday, making his first start in over a month. Three innings, one hit, six strikeouts, and two walks. He's also been playing a pretty good left field in terms of defensive left field and that one nearly thrown away. Obi just did get back to the bag, but a better play by Greco to save that ball from going down the right field line. But if you feel like if you're Duke, if you can get Johnson back fully into the fold, man, big shot in the arm here in early April. One strike pitch on the freshman outfielder is a strike. Nothing in two, he took something off. That might have been the slider there over the outside corner. Now nothing in two on Johnson. This is the second ACC team that Knowles has faced this year. Pitched against Virginia, lost that game, a game that William & Mary lost as Johnson rolls one foul. Four innings, two hits, two walks, and five strikeouts in that outing for Knowles, who has garnered a lot of attention, particularly here tonight, a lot of scouts here to see the Virginia or the William & Mary right-hander, probably some other prospects as well. Obi dancing from first, he goes. Two strike pitch, cut on and missed. And that'll be that for the Blue Devils in the second inning. Couple of punch outs in the frame and the two out walk does no harm. We go to the third inning and Jack Coombs on this beautiful night here in Durham. Four, five and six do up here for William and Mary in the third as the first pitch from Jackson Emus misses inside, ball one. Greco, Jackson, Gornison are the three scheduled. Come on, 
The pitch. Inside corner, a strike. One ball and one strike. The right-hander delivers a bunt attempt, and it's bunted through by Goreco here. One and two. The Blue Devils had vacated the left side of the infield, basically with the one strike, moving Miller over to the right side of the infield. So Greco had shortened to bunt and bunted through it. So now you know the bunt is off here on one and two. As the right-hander delivers, check swing. And they say he foul tipped it into the catcher's mitt. That's strike three. So back-to-back -back strikeouts for Emus. As Greco down on strikes for the second time tonight. And the leadoff man retired for the first time this evening. Now Henry Jackson, the right fielder, who led off last inning by walking, later came around and scored on the three-run home run by Trey Chrisman. First pitch. Caught a strike. Good fastball over the outer third. Nothing in one. Jackson, who walked, then moved to second base on the base hit by Trajani and then stole second base. He was sort of picked off, but was able to beat the wrap over at third. Put two on before the three-run home run. As that one sails outside, one ball and one strike. He missed the transfer from Princeton, where he appeared in 26 games, made 23 starts over his career for the Tigers, worked 125 career innings. This is low. 134 strikeouts and also threw one complete game. Trying to give the Blue Devils a little bit of length out of the bullpen here after noon. An inning in two thirds, three hits, three runs. A walk, a hit batsman, and three strikeouts through 42 pitches. Did noon, and of the 42 that noon tossed, 27 were strikes. Even count here on Jackson. The pitch. Stone tried to bring it back, but could not. It was outside, and the count is full. Right hander readies, and the payoff pitch. Out to left field and struck well. Johnson will turn and watch it go. The second homer of the year for Henry Jackson and William and Mary leading four to one in the third. Here's Gornison, the catcher, after the second William & Mary home run of the game. The Tribe now with 39 homers as a group. And the first pitch in there for a strike, 0-1-1. Gornison struck out against Noon last inning. A healthy cut here becomes up empty 0 and 2. Base is empty, one down, one in for William and Mary. Four hits for the tribe on four runs. Half of their hits have been home runs. And that's down and away. A ball and two strikes. Gornerson is the senior, played in 52 games with 45 starts as a junior last year. Finished third on the team in RBI. 39 total hits. Of the 39 hits, 17 of them went for extra bases, including 10 doubles, a triple, and six home runs. Found that one off of his body, and he'll give a moment to walk it out before hopping back into the right-handed batter's box. That one into the air. Back of second, Morris calling everybody off. 
two out. Base is empty, two down, and Luca Trajani coming up. Trajani, the graduate transfer to William and Mary after playing at St. Joseph's in the A-10. He singled to the left field his last time up. Trajani named to the All-A-10 team last year at St. John's. Second team All-League selection. Off the outside corner. Hit a career-high 307 last year. Also homered seven times and went eight for eight in stolen bases. Empty cut here on a good off-speed pitch, and it's one and two. A ball and two strikes on Trajani with that bat swirl above his right shoulder, and he chases the ball down and away for strike three. Third strikeout for Emus. He bookends the third with punch outs, but William & Mary adds a run to their ledger. Balls for William & Mary. Morris, an infield single to start the game, came around to score and takes strike one from Nate Knowles. Knowles, who has really settled in after that rocky start in which he allowed the first three men to reach and then got some help from his defense on a double play, giving up just the one run, and now he's way ahead here, nothing in two. Knowles, who has been just terrific this year, yeah. hits the outside corner for strike three. Three straight pitches there for the strikeout of Morris. It's the third punch out of the game for Knowles. Back-to-back -back strikeouts dating back to last inning. And Morris retired. And brings Ben Miller to the plate. The last start for Knowles came a week ago today against Monmouth as Miller chops one foul. One earned run, one walk, three strikeouts, and three hits allowed over five innings of work. That was actually over the weekend against Monmouth, last time he pitched, I beg your pardon. Back on April the 5th. Here's the 0-1. Hit him right on the elbow guard it appeared, and you hope that's exactly where it got him. Miller takes off the helmet, and he's... Walking up the third base line, Duke head coach Chris Pollard and athletic trainer Aldo Plata will come on to check on Miller. I think I might have got him in the hand. It looks like he's flexing out his left hand. I thought for a moment it was in the elbow guard. Could have been right there on top of that pitch. Calm device as well. And Miller will attempt to stay in, gets a good hand. Speaking of hands, Aldo Plata will check on the hand. As they head up the first baseline. Aldo seems to think all good. And we continue on. Seventh batter that Knowles has hit this year. And you can see there, yeah, I got it right on top of the hand, he said. Talking to Duke first base coach Eric Tyler. Got it right on the bone, gosh. He's going to stay in. I imagine he'll be icing that between innings. Here's A.J. Gracia. He walked in his first at bat. Gracia showing bunt. Bunts it back toward the pitcher. Knowles looks to second, but will take the E throw to first, and it pulled him off the bag. He's safe. Knowles the hesitation. He looked toward second, threw to first, and threw errantly, throwing down the right field line, pulled Greco off the bag. That is the 51st error committed by William and Mary this year. I imagine will be an E1, and now all of a sudden the Blue Devils have something brewing here. Two on, one out. And Bravo coming up. Bravo, a sacrifice fly in his first at bat. Driving in his 31st of the year. Takes the first pitch, a breaking ball for a strike 0-1. 
It will go as a straight error on the pitcher there. And you know, we saw a couple innings ago, the runner at first, Knowles didn't look all that comfortable throwing over to first base, and he threw one away. That time he pulled the first baseman off the bag, a high strike on the outside corner. Nothing in two on Bravo. There is bullpen activity for William and Mary. A left-hander is up as Bravo takes low. Good fastball, but missed downstairs. Miller still clinching that left hand after he got hit on the hand earlier this inning. One and two. Served foul down the right field line. Breaking ball rolled toward third and foul. Bravo got a hanger there, but was just out in front of it a bit. Blue Devils got one in the first on the Bravo sacrifice fly, William and Mary. Three in the second on a three run home run, a solo shot in the top of the third for the four to one tribe advantage. Here's the one two pitch on Bravo. And he chases a high fastball for strike three. Fourth strikeout for Knowles. Two down. And it's up to Chase Cruson if the Blue Devils will scratch a run across here. Knowles last year, 20 appearances, 17 starts, five and five with a 343 has been way better this year for his career today, marking his 30th career start and his 46th career appearance called strike. For his career, entered action 11 and seven with a 3.36 earn run average, which is getting better as he's gone along here so far in the ball game. Cruson takes a strike of the knees quickly, nothing in two. Two on, two out. Blue Devils trying to get something going here with two down. Duke has been very good with two outs this year. 68 two out RBI over the course of the season. And Cruson lifts one out to right field. Jackson drifting back. Jackson on to the warning track. Jackson has room and makes the catch. He will start things and takes a sweeping breaking ball for a strike to open up the fourth inning. Crispin with that big three-run home run in his first at-bat, his second of the year for the rookie. Who takes low here from Providence Forge, Virginia. Went to Washington Academy in Williamsburg, where he was named the school's male athlete of the year as a senior. First team All-State, first team All-Conference as a junior. Empty swing here, one and two. Also named All-State as a sophomore. Talk about putting together a heck of a high school career. Graduated with honors, member of the National Honor Society. Takes low here, two and two. On his bio, one of his game day superstitions, according to what it says on his bio, is he always eats cereal on game day. It's a lot of cereal, 56 games. Rolls one foul here. Curious to know what kind of cereal he eats. Raisin Bran, Cheerios, Frosted Flakes, Peanut Butter Captain Crunch, Fruity Pebbles, Kicks. I don't know if they make that anymore. 2-2. Two -two. And a little foul ball. Fruit Loops, Apple Jacks. I mean, the possibilities are endless. And then what if you go in a slump? Do you change the cereal? Do you keep the same cereal if you've got something going? 
Whatever cereal he ate today, he should eat it again. He hit a three-run home run. And he rolls one toward third. Miller a sliding stop. Fires to first in time. And that's how the fourth inning begins. Nice play by Ben Miller, retiring his counterpart. One away. And Francella coming up. I mean, really, there's a cornucopia of options, you know? Now I kind of want some cereal. <laughs> Francella over one today. He grounded out to Miller uh, back in the second. And he gets hit by a pitch. It's the second batter that Emus has hit, the third overall hit batsman tonight. And we told you this William & Mary team, very adept at getting hit by pitches. Came in 18th nationally and hit by pitches. Oh, Matt, Matt McCullough, who's bringing us the great pictures tonight, chimes in with some Count Chocula. Yeah, that was a good one. One on, one out. Back to the top of the order in Barnes, who has doubled and been hit by a pitch. He takes low. Ball one. Lucky Charms. How could we forget Lucky Charms? One, two, nine. One, two. One, <laughs> the right-hander is ready. The 1-0. Empty cut there on a good pitch. One and one. Crispin needs to just go back and rewatch that at bat. Somebody tell him. We're giving him all kinds of great cereal options. Time called. We'll start things all over again. Barnes, as we mentioned, the double and the hit by pitch today. One on, one out. We're in the fourth. Checking throw on the runner who's back. Regular Captain Crunch. Oh, no, not as good as peanut butter Captain Crunch. To me. Right-hander is ready and delivers. Swing and a miss by Barnes. On the ball down and away, one and two. Eight, two, nine. Barnes, also a wrestler in high school, won the Virginia Wrestling State Championship at the 132-pound weight class during his high school career at First Colonial High School. So a left-hander getting up for William and Mary. You wonder if the day may be ending for Knowles. As that one downstairs, good block by Stone, but he blocked it out in front of him, and an aggressive base running by Francella. He'll move up to second base, and we'll see how that is scored. Now the double play out of order, and William and Mary with a fourth run standing out there at second base. It'll be a wild pitch. Two on, or one on, two-two count. And that is strike three. Pulled the string nicely on a change up there. And for Emus, it is his fourth strikeout. Now two down. And it is up to Ben Parker if William and Mary will add any runs to their ledger. Parker with that hit by pitch last inning, or in the second inning, moved his on base streak to 10 consecutive games. Rolls the first pitch to the shortstop. Clark flags it down, throws to first in time, and that'll be that. So the hit by pitch really causes no angst for Emus. Still a wild pitch, runner stranded at second base, and William and Mary kept off the board in the fourth, and he's facing Stone, Clark, and Obi. And the first pitch on Alex Stone, looped out to right field. Jackson is there for the first out. So Stone is now fly to center and fly to right. Leadoff man is retired. And it brings up Wallace Clark, who struck out against Knowles in his first at bat. Mention Knowles. Honorable mention all conference a year ago. Worked in 20 games. Third in the nation last year with those 17 starts. As that one grounded on one big bounce to the shortstop, Francella has it. And one shortstop grounds out to another. Two quick outs in the fourth inning. And it's up to Devin Obi if the Blue Devils will have any fourth inning offense. 
Knowles led the team with 65 and two third innings pitch. Struck out a team best 70 men with a 3-4-3 ERA and a one and a quarter whip. 14 appearances and one start as a freshman a couple of years ago. Five appearance in league play. And it's just gotten better and better as his career has gone along. That one caroms to the backstop. Dad Gregory played baseball at the University of Miami. And in the Orioles and Cardinals organization. So it comes from a baseball family and it's been phenomenal for William and Mary, not just tonight, but all year long. Grounded foul up the third baseline and the count's even on Obi. Knowles named a third team midseason All-America by perfect game. Six nationally in ERA. And he just missed. Boy, thought that was good enough for strike three. Was heading off toward the first base dugout. But Lindy Hall disagreed. And unfortunately for Knowles and William and Mary, his opinion is the only one that matters. Three and two on Obi. The payoff pitch on the Duke center fielder. Has popped a mile into the air. Shallow center field. Parker comes charging in. And that will do it. Blue Devils go down one, two, three for the first time tonight. And we go on to the fifth inning. Three run lead and they've got the heart of the order coming up against Jackson Emos who's done a nice job of at least giving the Blue Devils a little bit of length here into the middle innings. After coming on for Tim Noon who started the game and De Los Santos has started off with the first pitch strike for the third consecutive at bat. 0 for two tonight, he's grounded to third and he has struck out. Amos, the right-hander out of the stretch at all times, delivers the 0-1, and that evens the count. Seventeen game hitting streak last year for De Los Santos. He's hitting eight straight this year and reached in every ball game this season. Swing and a miss. If you think back to that 2020 season, as he takes low two and two, Taylor Santos actually made his first career start against the Blue Devils on February the 18th. Also recorded an outfield assist in that game. And of course, the season cut short due to the pandemic as he comes up empty here. And that is five strikeouts for Jackson Emus, who is pitching great out of the bullpen for the Blue Devils. Leadoff man gone for the second consecutive inning, and now Anthony Greco coming up. Five strikeouts, a season high for Emus. His career high in strikeouts, 13. Did that at Virginia Commonwealth in 2022 while playing at Princeton. Gets Greco out in front here. He's been a strikeout victim twice tonight. Emus just getting better and better as this outing has gone along for the Blue Devils. This is upstairs here. Really just one bad swing against him, which was the home run by the guy on deck, Jackson. Two and two thirds now for Emus after that out. His longest outing of the year was three innings against Ryder on March the 13th. Misses with an off-speed pitch here, and it's two and one. 36th career game for the right-hander out of Clinton, Massachusetts. Part of a no-hitter last year at Yale. There is a ball inside, and the count's three and one. Second three ball count for the right-hander tonight. And that out to left. Johnson gives it a look, but has no play. 
And Emus has come all the way back here and filled up the count. Three, two. And we'll do it again. Payoff pitch due on the freshman first baseman is ball four. First walk issued by Emus. He has hit a couple batters. So a one out base runner for the Tribe who lead four to one. And now a guy the Blue Devils have not been able to solve yet at the plate, Henry Jackson. Jackson has had a nice ball game. And a chance to do some more damage here. Jackson probably has some friends and family in the crowd from Waxhaw, North Carolina, out to the west of here, a Charlotte suburb. Went to Marvin Ridge High School, takes inside, ball one. Jackson tonight walked, stole third, and scored. That was in the second. He had the solo home run an inning later. Both the home runs have come down the left field line for William and Mary tonight as Emus delivers. Inside, a fastball misses, 2-0. Jackson is a transfer, graduate transfer from Carson Newman, a Division II school in Tennessee. Finished his career with a 342 average and a 427 on base percentage. A home run, four RBI, three runs scored in one game last year. Pretty good game. 2 1. Empty cut to even the count. Played for a state championship at Marvin Ridge, was the runner up in 2019. First team all conference twice. The 2 2 out to right field. Gracia is tested for the first time tonight and makes the catch for the out. So Jackson retired for the first time in the ball game. And now Nate Gornison, the catcher, coming up. Gornison has played his entire career at William & Mary. 52 games last year, 45 starts, third on the team with 39 ribbies. Was fourth with 37 runs scored. Swings and misses here. Had a healthy cut and came up empty. Strike one. Emus, by the way, is approaching, if not over, 60 pitches. This is his longest outing of the year in terms of pitches thrown as that one bounces in. So would not be surprised if this was his final frame. William and Mary, as you can see, they've got some action in their bullpen. Although Knowles has been phenomenal, and you wonder if they run him back out for one more inning just to try to earn the win. There's Jimmy Romano, who's been up and throwing for Duke for the last couple of moments. Inside corner for a strike, one and two. So we'll see how the two head coaches elect to play it here as we get toward the middle innings, and Duke trailing by three, four to one. On what is a beautiful night in Durham, temperatures in the mid-60s. As that went fouled right at home plate, Stone couldn't hang on. Sun setting, lights on, mid to upper 60s, and barely a Zephyr here at the ballpark. Some staccato claps from the Duke patrons as Emus looking for the final out of the fifth. And Stone again couldn't hang on, fouled right at home plate. One and two on Gornison. So Gornison, the catcher, hanging tough. Stone will get a moment. Lindy Hall went out to exchange baseballs with Emus, and we'll try again. One and two. 
That will end the inning. Six strikeouts for Jackson Emus. He pitches around the one out walk and the side is permitted over seven and two third innings. He's into a seventh game this year. The free bases have really bugged him. Eight walks in almost eight innings, 16 strikeouts, but teams only hitting 042 against him and you can see why. Fastball there at 93, strike one. And Garnett, who we mentioned, 6'6", six, six, and that fastball at 93 there. Call that extension. Ball really gets on you a whole lot quicker. As that one a little bit high, he took something off. One and one. So while 93, maybe not as overpowering as some of the fastballs that we've seen, he gets on you a little quicker and makes it play up a little bit. Back to the fastball here at 95, and it's... One and two. Devin Obie, big part Kyle Johnson for the Blue Devils here. Then Zach Morris and Ben Miller, nine, one and two. Now one way outside at 96. So the velocity is not the issue here, has not been the issue for Garnett. It's been a little bit of the control, 16 walks in seven and two third innings. So basically 16 walks in eight innings, 16 strikeouts in eight innings. Come on, babe. And eight walks in eight innings. So about a walk an inning. It's been almost unhittable as that one is low, three and two. Let's go, kids. Garnett, last time out against Delaware back on March the 29th, inning in a third, three walks, three strikeouts, and three earned runs. And that's ball four. Borderline pitch misses and kind of right on cue. There's the walk per inning there for the left-hander. And see if Duke can get something going in the last of the fifth inning. Probably feel like you're breathing a little bit of a sigh of relief in the Duke dugout because Knowles is finally out of the game. But now you got to face a guy who's 6'6 and throwing 95. Doesn't get any easier. Morris takes inside. Garnett did throw against Virginia, the only other ACC team that William and Mary has faced. Two innings, a walk, and four strikeouts against the Hoos. The 1 0 pitch on Morris. Grounded toward short, could be two. Six, four, three. Double play. Francello Trajani Greco, six, four, three, the double play. That wipes away the base runner. It's the 19th double play that William and Mary has turned this year and the 18th double play that Duke has hit into. Pardon me, they've turned two double plays tonight, so that's now 20 double plays for William and Mary, and 19 double plays the Blue Devils have hit into. And now Harrison Rogers will pinch it for Ben Miller. And you hope it's just precautionary here. You remember that Miller got hit on the hand with that pitch from Knowles back in the third. And so Rodgers will come in here. I saw Miller kind of flexing it out. And certainly hope that it's nothing serious for Ben Miller. Blue Devils will certainly need him coming down the stretch of this ACC season. A called strike, and it's one and one. Rodgers, three for seven for the Blue Devils this year. Takes a strike. By the way, Knowles haven't given you his final line yet. Four innings, two hits, a run it was earned. Walked two, hit one, struck out four, threw 55 pitches. And the one, two, Rogers takes. Stee, right three. Dropped in a breaking ball right over the top and got him. That will be that. Nope. Romano, the junior, 6'1", 200 pounds, out of Roseland, New Jersey. Jimmy has been great for the Blue Devils so far this year, including on Sunday against Miami through in back-to-back -back games against the Hurricanes as Trajani takes the ball down and away. Romano goes to work on the number seven hitter in the order and misses 2-0, and 7-8-9, oh, and nine, due up here for William & Mary. Romano on Sunday, an inning and a third, Matching his longest, or one of his longest outings of the year. His longest career outing was two innings and nearly matched that. But anyway, Romano, an inning and a third on Sunday, retired every man he faced after throwing on Saturday a third of an inning and striking out a man. 
trying to come all the way back here. So he gets a strike, three and one. Romano on the year for Duke. First to pitch, which is bounced toward third. Rogers is tested for the first time and throws him out. Rogers, by the way, stayed in, if you couldn't tell. One down. Brings up Trey Crisman, who's three-run home run, one of the big differences in the ball game so far today. Romano, 15th appearance of the year, 1-0 with a .79 ERA. Jimmy's only allowed one earned run and five hits over 11 and a third innings. 16 strikeouts over those 11 frames against three walks. That's at the bottom of the zone for a ball, 2-0. A little bit low, three balls and no strikes. Romano with a 132 batting average against. The right-hander delivers. Ball four, so four straight out of the zone. Third walk issued by Duke pitching. And you kind of look at the score today. Four runs, four hits, one error for William and Mary. One run, two hits, no errors for Duke, but when you kind of dive a little deeper into the line score, you realize, okay, Duke's walked two batters. That's not bad. Duke's also hit three batters. Not great. That's outside for a ball. Also a wild pitch as well. Just, just a little bit too much free offense being given up. And Brady Kirkpatrick, the Duke pitching coach, will come out to have a work. Ender getting loose. Four to one, William and Mary with the lead. All the damage for the Tribe coming over a two-inning stretch. That's low. Six in a row of miss from Romano. That's ball three. Seven straight out of the zone. Francella has grounded out and been hit by a pitch tonight. There's a strike, three and one. Chrisman, three of five in stolen bases this year. He draws a throw, and Romano with a high throw. Good pick by Bravo out of the air to save an error. And that almost hit him. Ball four. Back-to-back -back walks to the numbers eight and nine hitters in the order. And now the lineup turns over for Barnes. Now Duke has a left-hander in the bullpen. Barnes digging in the right-handed batter. Although he's listed as a left-handed batter, he hits right-handed. And Alex Stone goes out for a visit. This would just be to buy a couple extra minutes for the bullpen, I would imagine. It's James Talon, the left-hander, getting loose for the Blue Devils in the sixth. So Stone being escorted to the home plate area. Let's see if Talon is ready once they get back to home plate. And here comes Brady Kirkpatrick. And that would give Talon a couple of extra minutes, and that will be it for a couple of runs. He'll turn in, bluff a throw to second base. No throw made by Talon, so he's only allowed one more step off during this at-bat. He's facing Jerry Barnes the third here, who has doubled, been hit by a pitch, and struck out. And the first pitch is low for ball one. Talon into his 33rd career game. Pitched twice in the series against Virginia a couple of weeks ago here at home. Buzzes the light tower there for ball two. 
Two men on base, the responsibility of Jimmy Romano, who walked them both. Romano, a third of an inning. No hits, a couple of walks, through 14 pitches, three of them for strikes. The 2-0 offering from Talon is at the knees, 2-1. Foul to the netting, two and two. Barnes and then Parker. Unless Talon can get a double play ball here, wants a new Pearl. So exchanges with the home plate umpire. Big open stance for Barnes. Talon with the 2 2. Got him. Paints the inside corner. Ten strikeouts now for Duke pitching. So Talon gets Barnes for the second out. And it's up to Ben Parker. Who is 0 for 2 tonight. Been hit by a pitch. That moved his hitting streak to, or not his hitting streak, his on base streak to 10 straight games. Looking for a two out RBI here at the pitch. Foul back, strike one. Four runs, four hits, one error, and five men left for William and Mary. One run, two hits, no errors, and four men stranded for the Blue Devils. A couple of big flies, the difference in the ball game today for William and Mary. Breaking ball outside. Three run home run by Christman in the second, solo home run by Jackson in the third. That's the difference today. William and Mary, one for eight tonight with runners in scoring position. Conversely, the Blue Devils, 0 for three. So other than the two long balls, it's been kind of a pitching and defense game tonight. Outside, three and one. Counts full. So Talon works his way all the way back in it now. Three balls and two strikes. And with two out, both runners will get a head start. Crispin from second. Francella from first. Talon with the payoff pitch. And we'll do it all over again. Open. Outfield playing Parker to go the other way a couple of steps. There go the runners. A 3 2 is down the right field line, slicing away from Gracia, and he does not have a play. Into the shrubbery down the right field line. In the bottom of the sixth inning, Duke will have Gracia, Bravo, and Krusen, 3 4 and 5, do up. Most likely against the left-hander Garnett with nobody loosening in the pin. Talon gets strike three. Goes back to the fastball, hits the inside corner. Talon out of the bullpen, back-to-back -back strike. Oh, shot. Blue Devils to bat in the bottom of the sixth inning as Gracia leads off and takes ball one. <laughs> All the stuffing was out of that poor stuffed animal toy there for Four-legged friend. Here's the 1-0. Gracia waving a miss. Garnett continuing on here for William and Mary. As you see the numbers on Gracia. Tonight he has walked and reached on an error, so 0 for 1 officially. The 1-1 from Garnett. Oh, strike. Fastball at 94. It's 1 and 2. There are the numbers on the Duke freshman. Average to 336, trying to spark the offense here. Big overshift on against him. And Gracia takes inside. Garnett walked the leadoff man in the fifth, then got a big ground ball for a double play and struck out Rodgers to truncate the frame. 
2 2. A curveball, a good one, but it was too far inside. And Grassi has battled his way back to a full count. Duke's had the leadoff man on a couple times tonight, but not been able to do a whole lot with it. They had a threat brewing in the third, but couldn't score. 3 2 is bounced foul. We talked about it earlier, but against Nate Knowles, who was so good at the start of the for the all four innings, was on the ropes a little bit early. Morris had the infield single to start the game, then Miller a base hit to right. 3-2 is cut on and foul. No, they say he got a piece. Lindy Hall, the home plate umpire, says he got a piece of it, and let's see what William and Mary wants to do. Mike McRae, the head coach, comes out to have a word with the home put umpire, who initially signaled by holding up his hand, swing and miss, and then when emphatically changed his mind and said, no, foul ball, foul ball. The umpires are going to get together here. But anyway, to finish the thought, Morris singled, Miller singled, Gracia walked to load the bases with nobody out. The Blue Devils just got the one run out of that. We said at the time, you hope that didn't let Knowles off the hook. It did as the umpires get together and say that it is going to be a foul ball. I don't believe this is a challengeable play. It is not. Good piece of umpiring there by this crew. And Wendy Hall uh, giving it right back to the Wave and Mary head coach. So a foul ball, Gracia stays alive. And the bat continues. Payoff pitch, ball four. And that's not gonna make any friends in that first base dugout, boy. Gornison really wanted that one. He started walking up the first base line. And there's some chirping for the home plate umpire. Gracia, who Chris Pollard, the Duke head coach, has said he's got the best plate discipline of any freshman he's coached, able to coax the walk there. Now Logan Bravo with one on and nobody out. Duke down three in the sixth. It's kind of where the Blue Devils have made their money offensively this year, scoring 63% of their runs between the fourth and eighth innings as Gracia, or beg your pardon, as Bravo takes upstairs ball one. Bravo the only RBI for the Blue Devils today, had that sacrifice fly in the first inning. It's also struck out. Garnett. Pumps in a strike, a fastball over the outer third. Bullpen activity for the Tribe, a right-hander up and throwing. Duke's got bullpen activity as well as we get toward the late innings. Here's the 1-1. Now tipped into the catcher's mitt, strike two. One tap on the plate by Bravo. Left-hander ready. Here it comes. Fastball served down the right field line and a play. Prusen will be next. Yeah. Curveball, got him. Bottom of the zone. Second strikeout for Garnett. That is six strikeouts for William and Mary pitching. One away, and Krusen coming up. So left on left here. Krusen, four for 11 against left handers this year. 364 average, hitting 324 against right-handers. But a much larger sample size against right-handed pitching. Cruson receives a strike. Fastball at 94 from the 6-6 southpaw. Cruson has flied to center and flied to right. What up, big ticket? One on, one out. The left-hander readies. He pitches. And Cruson takes inside up to the slider and missed. Come on, Travis. 
The 1-1. Half swing. They do not appeal. So a hitter's count for the freshman DH. Grassi, a walk to start the inning. Bravo struck out. And now two and two on Cruson. No way, no way. Anthony. Oh. Anthony. Three and two. Three balls, two strikes, one on, one out. Garnett with the payoff pitch. Bouncing ball to first, gloved by Greco. He will take the sure out at first. Gracia moves up to second base. And he'll take a two out hit from Alex Stone if the Blue Devils will score in the sixth. Headsy play there by Greco was going to be tough to get Gracia, who runs well, going to second base. So decided to trade the base for the out. And Stone, who's hitless in two tries, coming up. Stone has flied to center and flied to right. He's reached base safely in nine consecutive games. You'll remember Stone had a 30-plus game hitting streak and reach base streak last year as he takes one really tall and a good snag by Gornison. Let's go, Travis. Hey, Gracia man. away from second base with two out. Outside, ball two. Wallace Clark would be next if Stone can keep the inning alive and would bring the tying run to the plate. Come on, Travis. Go, Travis. Stone taking all the way, takes a strike. Garnett is ready. And it's three and one on the Duke catcher. Mentioned a little bit earlier, Garnett began his career at Maryland where he played for the Terrapins for a couple of years. 2021, 2023. Let's go, Travis. Transferring now to William & Mary. The 3-1 pitch on Stone. And the Blue Devils have two on with two out. Second walk of the inning, third walk of the outing for Garnett. Let's go, Travis. Now they do have a right-hander ready. Looks like a left-hander also ready. Wallace Clark gonna spin around and hit right-handed against Garnett. Brendan Kelly was the right-hander getting up in the William & Mary bullpen. And now let's see what the Tribe wants to do. You look at the numbers for Clark this year, in terms of his right-handed versus left-handed splits, he's hitting a lot better against left-handers. Fourth, two on, shows bunt, and yanks the bat away on a pitch downstairs. No, they say he swung. The first base umpire, Caleb Stone on appeal, said yes, he went around. Strike one. Not much argument there from the Blue Devils. So Clark, who was trying to lay down the bunt with the third baseman, Crispin, playing back. Probably not bunting here. Instead, takes one inside. Two on, two out. Blue Devils in a similar situation back in the third and couldn't score. The 1-1 one, one from Garnett outside. And a walk would load the bases. Devin Obi waiting in the wings for Duke. The 2-1 pitch on the Duke shortstop. 
is low, three and one. Do the Blue Devils give Clark the green light here? Don't know that I would. Garnett has not had a great command of the strike zone this inning. He did get the strike out of the ground out, but he's had some deep counts. Three and one. Clark takes a strike, three and two, and now the merry-go-round will begin. Gracia will get a head start from first. Stone on the move from first. Gracia from second, Stone from first. Three and two, two out. The payoff pitch on Wallace Clark. To the right side of base hit. Grassi around third, getting the green light. The throw comes to second. RBI single Wallace Clark, and it's a four to two ball game in the sixth. Wallace Clark continues to deliver for the Blue Devils, his 25th RBI of the year. And for Duke, that is their 69th two out RBI as a team this year. Now runners at the corners. Devin Obi coming up. Obi trying to come up for the Blue Devils here. Right hander against right hander. Obi slashes the first pitch foul. Obi tonight, a walk in the second, fly to center in the fourth. So 0 for 1 officially. Obi takes one low, rolls away from the catcher, and Gornison can't find it, but the Blue Devils don't risk going there. Clark probably could have gotten there if he had located the baseball and realized that the catcher had not been able to find the baseball a little earlier. Two on, two out. The 1-1 one, one on Obi. Instead to first and the runner back. Knowles started four innings, two hits, one run, four strikeouts and two walks for 55 pitches. Now the pitch on Obi, a swing and a miss. One and two. Garnett for an inning and two thirds, three walks, two strikeouts and only one hit allowed. And now Kelly trying to wiggle off the hook in the sixth. The pitch, swing and a miss to get Obi and in the inning. That's seven strikeouts for West. He'll face three, four, and five in the seventh inning for William and Mary. And it's De Los Santos who leads things off with the Tribe and takes a fastball for strike one. De Los Santos with his 31 game reach base streak on the line here in the seventh. He's 0 for three with a couple of strikeouts. Also hit safely in eight straight games as play begins here tonight. The one strike pitch from Higgins. A little bit low, went back to the fastball and missed. James Talon, two thirds of an inning out of the Duke bullpen, struck out both men that he faced, both looking. Talon, 13 pitches for the Blue Devils, coming out of the bullpen, eight of them strikes. Another solid outing for Talon. Here's the one one home, is an off speed pitch over but low, two and one. Come on, Joe. Duke got a run back in the bottom of the sixth. Higgins trying to keep it right where it's at. You see there, Taylor Santos nearly out of the batter's box. The 2-1 popped up, and that should get out of play and will. Counts even now. That back foot for De La Santos, look at it there. Just barely in the batter's box. Wow. Takes a wrong lock, a rock backwards, and he's out of the box, giving himself all the time he can to recognize the pitch. A 2-2 two -two to the left side and through, a base hit. So the reach base and the hitting streak continues on. And the leadoff man aboard for William and Mary in the seventh. De Los Santos, a sharp single through the left side. And it brings Greco to the plate. Checking throw on the runner at first, who is back. Greg. 
That ball looped out toward left field. Johnson comes charging on, still coming and makes the gliding catch. Tremendous play there by Kyle Johnson, who throws back to first, double play. Yeah. William and Mary may want, may want to review here. De Los Santos says, yeah, let's review. And let's see what the tribe will do. They will not use the challenge. So Johnson, who comes ranging over nearing the line, makes a great catch and then fires one back to first for the double play. And the first pitch, a breaking ball misses on Jackson, ball one. Jackson, a solo home run. That was in the third. It was the second of the home runs hit by William and Mary tonight. Higgins home on 1-0. And a fastball whistled foul down the right field line. Left-hander getting loose, as you can see, in the William and Mary bullpen. A ball and a strike. Right-hander against right-hander, Higgins pitches. And too tall with a fastball at 94. A three-run home run by Crispin in the second, a solo home run by this man, Henry Jackson, in the third. That's been the offense for William and Mary tonight, the 2-1. At the bottom of the zone, called a ball, 3-1. Another fastball there from Higgins. And now Jackson in the driver's seat. Can look for one pitch in one spot here. Here's the 3-1. Popped him up. Into right field, Gracia angling over. Three Blue Devils converging in foul ground. Nobody can get it. Take your time, so the count full as Gracia, Morris, and Bravo all converging on that foul ball down the right field line. Gracia has to pick up the shades and the lid, and we'll continue on. Good ball game here tonight. The Blue Devils trying to battle back again in the late innings. Trailing by a pair, Higgins trying to get off the field unscathed. The right-hander is ready and delivers. Uh, have another payoff pitch. Outfield around toward right against Jackson. Although his homer was to left. Yanked one down the left field line. Another 3-2 from Higgins. Here it is. And that is ball four. Fifth walk allowed by Duke pitching tonight. When you combine the walks with the three hit batsman. Some free base is given up. Here's Gornison, 0 for 3 tonight. Come on, boy. Let's go, boy. Come on, boy. Gornison awaits the first pitch. Good off speed over the outside corner. 0 oh and 1. Gornison tonight, a couple of strikeouts and a pop out to the second baseman. Higgins sets and tosses to first. Jackson, the right fielder, dives back. Got to keep a close eye on Jackson over there. He's five of five in stolen bases this year. William and Mary as a team, 52 of 63. Inside to level the count. Not an inordinate number, but a pretty good rate there for William and Mary. Jackson like, now six of six. I forgot about a stolen base earlier when the, he beat the pickoff play. So he's six for six. And now the 1-1 one, one. popped up a mile into the air, but out of play. Came inside with a fastball at 94, tied him up, and Gornison able to fight it off. In the bottom of the seventh inning, the Blue Devils will have 
Johnson, Morris, and Rogers do up. Remember, Rogers came on to hit for Miller after he got hit by the hand on the hand earlier tonight. One and two. Here's the pitch. And Gornison just got a piece of that breaking ball. Go, Ted. Four runs, five hits, an error for the Tribe. Two runs, three hits, no errors for Duke. Seven left on for William & Mary. Six men left for Duke. Here's the one-two. To two and two now. Two, two, got him with a breaking ball. So Higgins comes back with the strikeout. It's the third time Gordison is fan tonight. The Tribe gets a base hit and a walk, but a double against of the 20 hits he's allowed, five of them extra bases, four doubles and a home run. That's the first pitch to Kyle Johnson is in there for a strike, nothing in one. Johnson has struck out and walked and a couple trips to the play tonight. Had a big defensive play for the Blue Devils in the top half of this inning, getting the double play ball on the catch in left field and throwing it back across the diamond to first to double off De Los Santos. The 1-1 pitch is just off the outside corner for a ball. The pitch on Johnson dips a little bit low. And a three and one count here on Johnson leading off the seventh inning for the Blue Devils. Hindi ready to go at the three one and Johnson takes ball four. Good start for Duke in the seventh as Johnson walks for the second time in his first game back in the lineup in a little while after Dealing with that lower body injury, he's aboard. Zach Morris coming up now for the Blue Devils. Now, teams are obviously loath to put the tying run at the plate and the go-ahead run, or the tying run on base and the go-ahead run at the plate. But you can be maybe a little more cautious here with Morris than normal since Miller out of the lineup. Hopefully just a precautionary measure. As that one is outside ball one, perhaps you'd be a little more aggressive go, with Morris. We'll see how William and Mary wants to play it. Let's go attack, baby, attack. 4-2, Tribe leading by two. Blue Devils got a run back in the sixth. And that's inside 2-0 and oh on Morris. And I wonder now if you're the Blue Devils, perhaps you're telling Morris, hey, take until you get a strike. Nobody up in the William and Mary bullpen. So this is on Hindi for the next little while. 2-0, well, he yeah. was swinging, got an off-speed pitch there. Kind of middle third and just missed it. 2-1. What up, 4-0? Keep doing that. Still a hitter's count, though, for Morris, who chases a bad ball there, a breaking ball down. And the count goes from 2-0 and to now 2-2. Two and two. So they have been a little more aggressive here with Morris. He's obliged. Rogers on deck. Hindi delivers a ground ball through the left side. A base hit. Johnson turns second. And then the ball rolls under the legs of De Los Santos. But Johnson doesn't want to risk getting thrown out. It's that old baseball adage, right? Don't make the first out at third or at home. So first and second, nobody out. What you assume would be a bunning situation here for Rodgers. First and second, nobody out. Why would you not bunt here? Especially with Grassi and Bravo due up. Let's see if the Blue Devils are thinking along our lines. They are. Rodgers bunts toward third, and it will roll foul. Keep going, Mark. Rodgers came on for... Miller, who was hit on the hand earlier tonight. And boy, I certainly hope it was just precautionary taking him out of the lineup. He kept flexing out that hand. 
That's a big bat to miss if he's down for any extended period of time for the Blue Devils. The 0-1 on Rodgers. Instead, a late toss to second base. That's just so that he still has his two fakes left for this at bat. Bunny foul, and it's 0-2. Blue Devils tonight, one for five with runners in scoring position. I imagine the bunt is off here on 0-2. But how many times have you seen a guy get a big hit after he can't get the bunt down? See if that's the case here. Instead, a fastball at 89 to get him. Went up in the zone. Hindi with the first out of the inning. And now A.J. Gracia coming up. Maybe a tough matchup here for Gracia, left on left. Gracia 0 for 1 tonight, reached on the air. He's also walked twice. Gracia hitting 444 against lefties this year. Takes the first pitch for a strike. Versus a 291 average against right-handers. But he's had about 40 more at bats against right-handers than left-handers. So you can really make the numbers say whatever you want them to say. Duke head coach Chris Pollard called. Two on, one out. Blue Devils, as you can see, down a pair in the seventh. Check of second in the pitch he is outside. They do play Gracia as a pull hitter with the second baseman for Johnny way out into shallow right field. Now a timing play to second base and Johnson diving back safely. Good move, good move. Hindi, the fourth pitcher used by William and Mary tonight. Knowles, the starter, very good. One earned run and two hits over four innings of work. As that one is low and a hitter's count on Gracia. Garnett, three walks and two strikeouts. One run allowed in an inning and two thirds. Kelly for a third of an inning. And now Hindi. Gracia, the rookie, trying to come up big again. As he serves one foul the other way, and it's two and two. Let's go, Mark. Let's go. Let's go, Mark. So we'll see what Hindi comes back with here. He went to the fastball up in the zone to get Rogers. But Gracia has handled the fastball pretty well this year. The 2 2. The heater blew it past him. That's just best on best right there. And Hindi was a little bit better in that situation. Second strikeout. And it's up to Logan Bravo if the Blue Devils will get any closer in the seventh. Just a tremendous job by Hindi after the walk and the base hit of coming back and getting the next two men via the strikeout. Bravo, a sacrifice fly in the first. After that, two strikeouts. Big lead for Johnson as Bravo takes a curveball at the knees. Strike one. Dropped in that slow curveball there. It's 77 on the inner half. And that's down the right field line and 0-2 and on the Duke first baseman. So Hindi trying to come all the way back. And wouldn't that inject a lot of momentum into the first base dugout? 0-2 oh, on Bravo. And that nearly hit him. Misses inside about letter high. One tap on the plate. By the Duke first baseman. Now, the pitch. That evens the count. Good eye by Bravo not to chase. And again, not wild about putting the tying run into scoring position, but you got a left-hander on deck and Krusen. So maybe you can be a little more selective here. Bravo rolls one to first. That is a fair ball behind the bag. Greco touches first and ends the inning. The first two men, Ryan Higgins. Luca Trajani will start things here for the Tribe. One out of three, singled and scored as part of that three-run second inning. The big blow, the 
three run home run by Trey Christman, who's on deck. Higgins, ready to go back to work. And that is low. Higgins threw 20 pitches in the seventh, a leadoff single for De Los Santos, and then Greco lofted a ball down the left field line that Johnson made a nice play on, threw back to first for the double play, then a walk to Jackson, but a strikeout of Gornison ended the seventh, and Higgins goes back to that Frisbee slider there for a strike, one and two. Higgins, who did pitch against Miami over the weekend, pitched on Saturday against the Hurricanes. The one, two, got him. Second strikeout for Higgins. Leadoff man retired in the eighth. Higgins on Saturday against the Miami club. Two and two third innings, four hits, a couple of runs and three strikeouts. Just getting tuned up for the weekend. Duke will be at Pittsburgh this weekend. Low on Christmas, who hit the home run. Meanwhile, William and Mary. This weekend, the Tribe will return home to take on North Carolina A&T. The 1-0 pitch on Crispin. There's a fastball upstairs. That might have actually been the slider there from Higgins. Either way. It's two balls and no strikes. Nobody on, one man out. We are in the eighth. A well-pitched, well-played baseball game tonight. That one glances off of Stone's mitt. That was the fastball at 93, and that one was too tall. It's 3-0. and oh. Higgins, home on 3-0. And that misses low, ball four. Second walk issued by the Duke right-hander. Third time Crispin has reached base tonight. He had the home run and now a pair of walks. And he's aboard for Francella. Francella. Grounded out to third, that was in the second. He's also been hit by a pitch and walked. Thinking about a steal, Crispin three of five in stolen bases this year. Thinking about a hit and run, as Higgins throws on the runner at first, not in time. Not a bad idea. Francella, a guy who handles the bat very well, only nine strikeouts and 66 at bats. 258 average coming in, so he puts the ball in play, so. Hit and run, not a bad idea, although Higgins has now missed with five in a row out of the zone. So perhaps the strategy here is take until you get a strike. Time called, here comes Brady Kirkpatrick, the Duke pitching coach. Duke does have a left-hander up in the bullpen. As the, it's the 1-0 on Francella is a fastball at 94 over the outside corner. That evens up the count now on the William & Mary shortstop. One man on, one man out. And the 1-1 from Higgins. Just cut to miss. Fastball at 94, one and two. The one and two on Francella. Got it. Firmest fastball of the night for Higgins at 95. It's his third strike out of the outing. Two down, and now the lineup turns over, and it'll be Jerry Barnes, the third, who's coming up. Higgins has been very impressive for the Blue Devils tonight. Barnes has had a nice ball game, one out of three, but he's been on base twice. Yanked a double down the left field line in his first at bat. Also been hit by a pitch and struck out a couple of times. Takes ball one here. As we mentioned, William and Mary very adept at getting hit by pitches. Interaction today, 18th nationally. 
the number of hit by pitches. And Barnes leads the club now with 13 hit by pitches. Nearly got hit there. Higgins to the plate on 2 and 0. They get 3 and 0. Let's go. Cruson, Stone and Clark are due up for the Blue Devils in the bottom of the 8th. Higgins trying to get it there with the game still a two-run ball game. Fastball at 93 over the outside corner, 3 and 1. The 3 1 grounded towards short. Clark rounds off the route, goes the short way to second, and that'll be that. The walk does no harm. A man left for the tribe in the eighth. The game rolls to the bottom half with William and Mary still in front of Duke by a pair. Fishman here. Hendy continues on. Chase Cruson leads off the eighth inning for the Blue Devils, and here you will bloop a base hit to left field. And then it's overrun by the left fielder, De Los Santos, and Cruson is into second base with a double. So the turf maybe playing a little bit of a havoc there with the left fielder, De Los Santos, as Cruson into second base. It's a straight double, his second of the year. And now Alex Stone, the tying run comes up. First pitch on Stone is outside ball one. Give Cruson a lot of credit too for hustling out of the box. Not just being content with the single. Made that wide turn, and now it's 2-0 and oh on Stone. Wallace Clark on deck, and you wonder if that might start to get the bullpen busy for William and Mary. They've gone right, left, right, left. We'll see who gets ready next for the Tribe, if anybody. The 2-0 oh on Stone. Here it comes. And it's upstairs. Off-speed misses. 3-0. and oh. William and Mary fans that are here wanted that one. As did Hindi. Now the 3 0. Stone takes similar pitch, similar spot. That was a fastball. It looked like he just took something off, got it over. Stone was in take mode, and now Alex can sit one pitch in one spot. The 3 1 pitch is the bottom of the zone breaking ball for a strike. So back to back strikes here by Hindi to pitch himself. Back into the count. Stone the tying run at the plate. The payoff pitch. Swing and a miss. He got him. Third strikeout for Hindi. One down. And Wallace Clark coming up. Clark had the RBI single for Duke in the sixth. He's also grounded out and struck out. Takes an off-speed pitch at the knees. Strike one. Clark, the switch hitter, batting right-handed against the left-hander. Swings and misses here, 0-2. The Blue Devils with the leadoff man on for the third consecutive inning and the fourth time tonight. They only have the two runs. Duke one of nine with runners in scoring position. And just three for 16 tonight with runners on base. The one two pitch. To two and two now. Devin Obi on deck. Then Kyle Johnson if the inning continues. 
At worst for the Blue Devils, the 2-2, Clark takes one that he thought might have hit him on the shoe tops. Instead, it's full. If you can find a way to at least get Johnson up here, would certainly be good, means you're being very productive offensively, but would at worst mean you have the top of the order due up in the last of the ninth. Three and two on Rodgers, Hendy with the payoff pitch, and we'll do it again. Another good at bat by Wallace Clark. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah. Go 40 on now, Hendy. Three and two, one out, and Cruson at second base. Another payoff pitch, and another foul. Here it comes. Yeah. Ninth pitch of the at bat coming for Wallace Clark. And how many times have we seen this from the Blue Devil shortstop this year? Quality at bat after quality at bat. Trying to find his way on. Another 3 2. And that's ball four. Second walk issued by Hendy. And now he's got a little bit of trouble here. Two on, one out, and Obi coming up. You see O'Shell getting loose in the Duke bullpen at the top of your screen. Now it's up to Obi, who's walked, flied to center, and struck out tonight. First pitch on Obi. He's on the outside corner, a strike, 0 and 1. The one strike pitch on Obi. Foul back. And it's nothing in two on the Duke center fielder. Obi takes one upstairs. Just trying to change the eye level there of the Duke center fielder. Now a one and two pitch. Over but low, Obi wouldn't chase that sweeping curveball. So from 0 and 2 to 2 and 2. Base hit scores one. A gapper might tie the game. The 2 2. Yeah. Obi takes inside a borderline pitch. And it's three and two with one out. I doubt you will see the runners in motion here, down by two. But we'll wait and see. A walk would put the go ahead run on base. Payoff pitch. Obi fouls it right at home plate. Hendy up over 40 pitches in the outing. Back to back, deep at bats. Three and two, the payoff pitch on Obi. Here it comes. And we'll do it again. New baseballs for the home plate umpire is Hendy. Takes a moment, gets the signal. And we'll tow the rubber. Eighth pitch of the at bat coming. And Obi takes ball four. Back to back, one out walks. And the bases are loaded for Duke. And Kyle Johnson is coming up. Nobody up. And the William and Mary bullpen. It's all on the left-hander Hendy as he begins his second time first at bat 
or does not have a hit. He's 0 for 0 with the bases loaded. That means he doesn't have a sacrifice fly. First pitch, Johnson tardy on a slider, strike one. Johnson has been to the plate three times. He's walked twice, struck out once. William and Mary looking for a ground ball. Johnson takes inside. And the count evens on the Blue Devil rookie. Taps one time on the plate. Fouls that one off. Hendy, a lengthy inning in terms of pitch counts, but still nobody throwing behind him. Well, that one kind of crossed the catcher up a little bit, and Gornison with a tremendous block. McGee was looking for something a little more up in the zone, and that one sent him sprawling. Also evens the count at two apiece. Here's the 2-2 pitch on Kyle Johnson. Down the right field line and out of play. This will be the 30th pitch of the inning. Steve, right three. Throws him with a curveball over the outside corner. And Johnson down looking. Fourth strikeout for Hendy. And it's up to Zach Morris in the eighth. A tremendous 2 2 pitch from the left hander. That over the top breaking ball dropped it right in there for strike three. Now Morris, two out of four tonight with a couple of singles. Base is loaded, two men out. Here's the pitch on Morris. A ground ball foul up the third baseline. Oh boy, wake ahead. You doing it, Mark? On the knee. Morris hitting 500 this year with the base is loaded. Small sample size, though, four for eight. Come on, Mark. Come on, Indy, up now. 0-1. Oh, and two. And Hendy all of a sudden, a strike away from wiggling off the hook and stranding all three runners on base. Oh, and two on Morris. Here's the pitch. Upstairs. Cruson at third. Clark at second, Obi at first. The one two on Morris. Out towards center field, hit well. Parker is back and has room on the warning track to end the inning. Now Oshel back to work in the ninth and drops in a good breaking ball for strike one on Ben Parker. 0 for three tonight, but did get hit by a pitch in the second inning. That moved his on base streak to nine consecutive games. As O'Shell, the tall right-hander, delivers again. A breaking ball in there, 0 and two. And if you're with us on Sunday for the Miami game, we talked about how big of a shot in the arm it is for O'Shell if he can Get back to form, misses outside here. Really gives you even more depth at the back end of that bullpen. One and two, O'Shell ready. Lifts the leg and pitches. Fastball, misses outside, two and two. So from 0 oh and two to two and two. Michelle oh, ready. Big open stance for Parker. And now the pitch. Stee, right three. Dropped in a breaking ball over the outside corner. And Parker down on strikes. One down. Here's Joe De Los Santos. One out of four tonight. Singled in his last at bat and then was doubled off of first base. 
Oshell delivers. Fastball outside. 94 there from Oshell. Misses low here, another fastball, two balls and no strikes. Figured you probably would not see Bielinson tonight, although the game has not dictated that for Duke either. After he pitched all four days last week. Probably wants a, probably didn't want, but probably will take a day off or two. We've seen O'Shell, we've seen Talon. Both those guys have looked good for the Blue Devils tonight. Talon, two thirds of an inning, two strikeouts. O'Shell gets the first man he faces on strikes. And now his two and one pitch is popped into right field. This is Gracia coming in, Bravo going out. It's the second baseman, Morris, who takes charge and makes the catch. Come on out to Father, man. Two away. And Anthony Greco coming up. Greco, the cleanup hitter. The left handed batter against the right handed pitching O'Shell. First pitch in there, strike one. Greco, 0 for 3 tonight. He did walk in the fifth. A couple of strikeouts in the first and the third. Last at bat, fly to left field that started that double play on a good play by Kyle Johnson, ranging to his right nearing the line. Swing and a miss. Fastball at 95 from O'Shell, and it's nothing in two. In the bottom of the ninth inning, Duke will have Rodgers, Gracia, and Bravo do up. Two, three, and four. And they'll be facing the same left-hander. Nobody up in the bullpen for William and Mary. Swing and a miss. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. A fastball at 90 for Rodgers in the last of the ninth. And the first pitch misses for ball one. Blue Devils have had their chances. They've left 11 men on base tonight. And they're one for 11 with runners in scoring position. Winslow takes ball two inside. Winslow, Gracia, and then Bravo. Blue Devils trailing by two in the last of the ninth. Two and one now on Winslow, who flips one down the right field line. Duke on Sunday trailed by six before scoring six times in the eighth. And then they trailed by three in the top of the 11th before they scored four times in the last of the 11th to beat Miami 11 to 10. Winslow takes ball three. Duke has had the leadoff man on in the first, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth but only the two runs. Ground ball up the middle, backhanded by Trajani from his backside, yeah. throws to first, and not in time. They say it pulls Greco off the base, and William and Mary will ask for the review. Why not? It was a tremendous play there by the second baseman, Trajani, ranging to his right. Duke will get a pinch runner in as Sam Yelton will come on to run, but they're not going to put Yelton at first base yet because they've got to go challenge it to make sure Yelton can be at first base first. And that's what Lindy Hall is telling Duke head coach Chris Pollard, who's saying hey, we got to take a look at it first before we can go back and make sure that he's at first base. So the umpires have gone over to take a look and we don't have the privy of the replay review here tonight so we're just going to be at the mercy of ever how long this review takes I don't think it's going to take very long from where we sit here in the naked eye I sort of thought that it did pull the first baseman Greco off the bag and if it stands it'll be an infield single which we believe it will and would bring the tying run to the plate. And if you're William and Mary, man, right, nothing to lose up by two, trying to get the three outs and head out of here with a victory. So
So still waiting the umpires. It looks like it's the, here they come. He is safe. Claw stands. Sam Yelton running at first base. Leadoff man is aboard. And Gracia is the batter. Gracia struck out against Hendy in the seventh. Dukes had the leadoff man on in each of the last now four innings. But Wave and Mary has done a nice job of limiting the damage. Duke had the bases loaded last inning with one out, couldn't score. First two men reached in the seventh, and no runs across for Duke either. The 0-1, 0-2 on Gracia. Two walks, did reach on an error as the rookie now. Gracia down to his final strike. Here's the pitch. Ground ball into the heart of the shift. Swiegen steps on second for one, throws errantly to first, hits up against the dugout, and Gracia will be at second base. So it's an out at second. Let's go, Mark. And I think Duke wants to challenge the play at second here. Wait, what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. And Duke wants to challenge that Seguin never stepped on second base. And again, we don't have the privy of the replay here in the booth, so we're at the mercy of the length of the review. So it'll be a, an error should the runner move up to second base. Would be the third error against William and Mary tonight. And just waiting for the umpires to finish their review. I don't imagine this would take a long time. But you never know. And he will be out, as we thought was the case. Call stands. Let's go, Amy. So, fielder's choice as Grassy reaches will move to second base on the error. And now a runner at second, one down. And Bravo at the plate. And look out into the Duke dugout. And I got a piece of Duke head coach Chris Pollard there at the edge of the dugout. I think they got the skipper in the leg there hope he's okay nothing in one on bravo he's the tying run and he pops that one into the air behind home plate the catcher gornison looking for it can't find it because it's on the roof strike two <laughs> Blue Devil is down a pair. Last of the ninth. Got him. Upstairs again. And William and Mary and out away from a win over the seventh ranked Blue Devils. And it's up to Chase Cruson, who blooped a double to left field his last time up. William and Mary with a win tonight. It would be their first win 
over an ACC team since they beat Duke a couple of years ago. Slow roller to second base. The throw got him. And William and Mary on the road beats the Blue Devils.